Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sarah van Grenen, a.k.a. Mr. VG, and I am now on video two in this chapter about grade 10 statistics, looking at the revision. But in this specific exercise, we are going to look at practicing to determine these measures of central tendencies, with the exception being standard deviation. Standard deviation, grade 11. I'm not going to look at it at all because that's a big formula that I don't want to look at in this video. So if I look at this, let's take this data and determine the value of the mean. In other words, if I had to say this is a marks out of 20 for a class test, what is the mean? How do I determine it? Well, I'm simply going to say the mean, that's that X with a line at the top, is adding all the numbers together, dividing it by how many numbers there are. So 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus blah, 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 up to 18 and divided by 12. And this is giving me 12,42. So what does this actually mean to do? What this actually means, ladies and gentlemen, is that if I pick someone at random in this class, I can kind of expect their mark out of 20 to be about 12,42. That is the mean. If I look, as I was saying, if I look at this sum, okay, it just didn't sit well with me, interestingly enough, ladies and gents. That's why the, the video feels maybe a bit disjointed because I looked at that 12,42 and it just feels like, you know, there's more numbers below the 12,42. So I quickly went and I recalculated this and the actual answer for this one is not 12,42 but 11,67. Interesting, I made that mistake. I didn't do it on purpose, but as I was going to the video, I was like, yo, it just feels a little bit too high. Because, I mean, look at all of those numbers below the 12. Mm. Then I read the quick reevaluate, bam, 11,67. So when we have a look now at the next question, the next questions are give the value of the median. In other words, the number that lies in the middle. I know that some teachers teach you guys formulas on how to determine the position of it. Well, I'm not going to use any formulas because the examiners have actually come out, especially your independent schools, and said, please, please, please don't teach your kids formulas because some teachers teach one thing, another person teach something else, and there's like three or four different ones. But the one that is acceptable is literally going front and back and front and back and front and back and front and back until I get to some point like there where I say, mm, it must be somewhere, it must be exactly in the middle, not somewhere in the middle, exactly in the middle of 10 and 12. So which number is exactly in the middle of 10 and 12? And that is 11. Now I can do a mathematical formula for that by saying 10 plus 12 over 2, which just gives us the middle value. So if you can use your brain, which I hope you can, then it gives us exactly in the middle of 10 and 12, which is 11. Now, the value of the upper and the lower quartiles. Remember, ladies and gents, you've split your, um, your data set into two. There's the bottom half and the top half. That 11 lies in between 10 and 12. So, therefore, my bottom part for the lower quartile is going to be those values. And you'll see I again now did front, back, front, back. In the middle of 9 and 9 must lie my quartile 1. So quartile 1 is 9, which again means 
25% of my data lies at 9 or below. The upper quartile, then I use the top parts and again get the middle, which lies then exactly between 14 and 15. So my upper quartile is 14.5. How did I get that 14.5 again? I just used my brain. But if you want to use your maths formulas, you can go 14 plus 15 divided by 2. So if I want the interquartile range, now I didn't ask that initially, but as I was going through the video, I was like, yeah, let's do interquartile range. That is simply Q3 minus Q1, which is 14,5 minus 9, which is 5,5. So ladies and gentlemen, that gives us basically the middle 50%. Remember, that is between 75% and 25%. That's Q3 and Q1. So that's the middle 50%. The range of that. So how far do they lie apart? What is the advantage of the interquartile range? Hmm, that's an interesting question. What is the advantage that the interquartile range has above the normal range. Remember, normal range is maximum minus minimum. The interquartile range ignores our top and our bottom parts. So in other words, there's not going to be outliers that skew our data. So for instance, there's, we're not going to look at kids that did way too well or way too badly in our grade 10 class. We are only going to look at the middle 50% to look how closely the data lies together. That's the advantage that the interquartile range has. Now the next question is, give me the value of the range. Now the value of the range is just the maximum minus the minimum. And therefore, 18 minus 8, which would give me 10. And that, ladies and gents, is the basic revision of grade 8 and 9 statistics up to this point. But what I would like you to do is just tune in to the next video. where We are going to look at an exam question or two of them that's ch going to challenge you a little bit more than these than this one that I did in this video. So this is Mr. VG signing out. Keep well. Cheers.